clase, practicamos los verbos en pasado. Hoy vamos a revisarlos de nuevo. Repita las palabras después de mí. Played. Played. Studied. Studied. Listen. 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 Name. 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 Watched. 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 Washed. 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 Liked. 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 Juan? Verb, noun, uh, describing word. That's right. And what else? Alexa? Negative. Correct. Negatives are also stressed. Can you give me an example of a negative, Rosario? No. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no is definitely a negative. <laughs> what else? Ignacio? No. That's right. Not is a negative word in English. Not is used with helping words in English to make verbs negative. For example, we say, I can swim. The negative of that is, Otario? Cannot or can't. That's right. We can say can't or cannot. Let's say can't because it's used more commonly in speaking. Everybody, please say can't. 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 Good. Now repeat after me. I can't swim. I can't swim. I can't swim. Very good. Now can you tell me which words have stress in this sentence? I can't swim. Can't swim. Very good. Can't and swim are stressed. And this is because, Rosa? Swim is a verb. Can't is a negative word. That's right. Swim is a verb, and can't is a negative word. Let's practice this a little. Listen to me while I read all the sentences in the first column. I can drive. You can skate. He can dance. She can sing. It can run. We can win. They can ski. Which words did I stress? That's right, all the verbs. How about can? Did I stress can in these sentences? No. Profesora, usted aspiró la palabra can. Dijo, I can swim. No dijo, I can swim. Very good. That is correct, Otavio. En inglés, cuando no acentuamos una palabra, puede escucharse como si la aspirásemos. El inglés es una lengua que da mucha importancia a la acentuación. Stress is important. En inglés, las palabras que no se acentúan se dicen más rápido que las que llevan acento. Si tienen que decir algo rápidamente, sonará como una aspiración. Pero hay algo bueno en todo esto. ¿Qué es? Es más fácil oír la diferencia entre oraciones afirmativas y negativas. Listen. I can swim. I can't swim. I can swim. I can't swim. ¿Oye la diferencia? Sí. Great. Now repeat after me. I can drive. I can't drive. I can drive. I can't drive. I can drive. I can drive. I can drive. I can't drive. You can skate, you can't skate. You can skate, you can't skate. You can skate, you can't skate. He can dance, he can't dance. 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 
She can sing. She can't sing. She can sing. She can't sing. She can sing. She can't sing. It can run. It can't run. It can run. It can't run. It can run. It can't run. We can win. We can't win. We can win. We can't win. We can win. We can't win. They can ski. They can't ski. They can ski. They can't ski. They can ski. They can't ski. Not bad. <laughs> Now let me test your listening a little. I will say a sentence from either list one or list two. If I say a sentence from list one, you can hold up one finger. If I say one from list two, you will hold up two fingers. For example, if I say, "He can't dance," you will hold up two fingers. Ahora diré una oración. Si la oración está en la lista uno, levantarán un dedo. Si la oración está en la lista dos, levantarán dos dedos. Si digo, por ejemplo, "He can't dance," ustedes levantarán dos dedos. If I say, "It can run," You will hold up one finger. Any questions? No. No. Let's begin. We can't win. Good. She can sing. I can't drive. He can't dance. They can ski. That was good. <laughs> you can hear the difference, and that's very important. Now let's see if you can say these sentences so others can understand you. This time, instead of holding up one or two fingers, I would like you to say one or two. Vamos a hacer el ejercicio todos juntos. Juan, tú eliges una oración y se la dices a Luisa. Luisa dirá one. Si oye una oración de la primera lista, o tú si oye una de la segunda. Juan, tú deberás decirle si la respuesta es correcta o no. Después, Luisa le dará una oración a Rosario y así continuaremos el ejercicio. Are there any questions? ¿Qué sucede si digo algo de la primera columna y Luisa lo oye más y dice que es de la segunda? ¿Gana ella o gano yo? You know, well, that's a good question. What do you think, class? If Juan says a sentence from column one, but Luisa thinks it's from column two, who is right? No se trata de quién gana o pierda. Lo más importante de este ejercicio es que la gente se pueda entender cuando hablamos, ¿no? Luisa, you are absolutely right. Escuchen todos. Luisa tiene toda la razón. Nos acaba de dar una buena lección. Lo fundamental cuando hablamos con otras personas es que les entendamos y nos entiendan. Por lo tanto, nadie gana ni pierde en esta actividad. Podemos empezar? Sí. sí. Can we begin? Yes. Okay. Juan. I can drive. Juan. Correct. Um. He can dance. Two. Correct. One. Luisa, <laughs> so say it again. He can dance. One. Good. What's that? I'll tell you. He can strong. Two. Good. <laughs> Good practice. Now I have a question for you. Some of you understand the sentence that your classmate was saying. And some of you didn't. Algunos de ustedes entendieron la oración que dijo su compañero, pero otros no. Algunos de nosotros adivinamos lo que dijo. <laughs> That's right, Rosario. Some of you just guessed. Algunos solo adivinaron. And some of you guessed right, and some of you didn't. And that is my question. If you're having a conversation with someone, if you're talking to someone, do you want to just Guess whether I'm saying I can help you or I can't help you. 
It might be very important, right? Yeah. <laughs> the question is, what can you say if you don't know whether the person said, I can help you or I can't help you? Jorge? Please say that again. Good. You can say that. But what if the person repeats the sentence the same way and you still don't understand? I know. You can say, did you say can or can't? Right. You can say, did you say can or can't? Let's try it. I get up. <laughs> Otavio? Did you say can or can't? I said can. I can help you. Good. You're learning how to ask for clarification. That is an important skill. It's important que pidamos una aclaración cuando no entendemos lo que nos están diciendo. Así, entenderemos mejor a los demás. Now you try it. Let's do the same practice again. But this time, if you don't understand what your classmate says, please ask them for a clarification. If you do understand, just tell them whether you heard a sentence from column one or column two. Any questions? No. no. Okay, let's do it. I can try. Did you say can or can't? Can't. Two? Correct. Good. Mm. He can that. One? Correct. Octavio, he can't strong. Two. Good. We practiced two important things today. What are they? We practiced saying can and can't in sentences. Yes. We practiced can and can't in sentences. And what was important about that? Rosa? The stress. Right. The stress is important. How are these words said in sentences? Which one is stressed? Yes. Which one is not? Can. Great. And what else did we practice? Clarificación. Right. We practiced how to ask for clarification. Good work, class. <laughs> Saber cómo decirle a alguien que no entendemos lo que dijo eso es muy importante. En próximas clases, seguiremos practicando cómo pedir una aclaración. Pueden practicar lo que hemos aprendido hoy con sus vecinos, en el trabajo o en cualquier otro lugar. No se olviden de hacer las actividades en sus cuadernos de ejercicios. You can do it. Until next time. Goodbye. Bye. Direction. North. North. South. South. East. East. 
twist. Twist. Light. Light. Stop light. Stop light. Stop sign. Stop sign. Traffic light. Traffic light. To be going to. To be going to. To be lost. To be lost. To ask for. To ask for. To cross. To cross. To turn. To turn. To get to. To get to. Good evening, class. How are you doing? Welcome to class. In the last class, you talked about the neighborhood. Uh, yes, uh, Alejandro? I will move this weekend. Oh, where do you live now? So far from school. Uh, I want to live near the school. Oh, you live far from school. Are you going to move into the neighborhood? Yes, I am. I will live in this neighborhood. Is it nice? Oh, it's very nice. I live in this neighborhood. I love it. Cesar, there is a bank, a post office, and a library. Pino? There are also stores and restaurants, and there is a, a beautiful park. Stores. 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 Very good. There are also stores and restaurants, and there is a beautiful park. It sounds great. And wait to move. Good. Are there any questions? Yes, I have a question. You said going to when you were talking about the future? Yes. I said he is going to move. In the last class, we learned to use will for the future. He will move this weekend. He will move. This weekend. Everyone repeat. He will move this weekend. He will move this weekend. He will move this weekend. Good. In English, you can also use to be going to to talk about the future. He is going to. In English, también se puede usar to be going to para hablar del futuro. He is going to move this weekend. He is going to move this weekend. He is going to move this weekend. You use the correct form of the verb to be, is, and then the simple form of the main verb, to move. It's very easy and very common. Let's try a few, and then we can start class. Ricardo, what are you going to do this weekend? I'm going to go to a disco with my friends. Ricardo is going to go to a discotheque with his friends. Ricardo va a ir a una discoteca con sus amigos. Ah, that sounds like it's going to be fun, isn't it? Yeah. Anna, what are you going to do this weekend? 
My family and I are going to go to the beach. We are going to visit my brother. Oh, Anna and her family are going to go to the beach. They are going to visit her brother. Does everyone understand? Yes. Yes. Okay, let's start class. In la última clase, hablaron de vecindarios y de lo que hay en ellos. También hablaron del futuro. En esta clase, veremos cómo preguntar y dar indicaciones. Goal for the class. Giving directions. Dar indicaciones. This is a poster of our neighborhood. Do you remember it from the last class? Yes. yes. What do you see that is the same, Juan? Uh, the school. The school, yes. Maribel? The park. The park, very good. Anna? The bank and the gas station. The bank and the gas station, very good. How about you, Vicente? Uh, the Italian restaurant and the Chinese restaurant. 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 The Italian restaurant and the Chinese restaurant. Mm -hmm. Very good, Vicente. Uh, Carmen? Uh, the street. Watson Drive. Watson Drive. 22nd Street. 22nd Street. McIntosh Road. McIntosh Road. Walnut Avenue. And Walnut Avenue. Good. The streets are the same. All the buildings are familiar to you. Is there anything different? Anything that is not familiar? Hay algo diferente? Algo que no le sea familiar? Yolanda? Yes, there are some different things. But I don't know the names in English. That's okay. Can you come to the front and point to those things? Does anyone know what this is? Anna? It's a light. That's right. It's a traffic light. Sometimes we call it a stop light or a traffic signal. Traffic light. Semáforo. Traffic light. Traffic light. Traffic light. Stop light. Stop light. Stop light. Semáforo. Stop light. Stop light. Stop light. Traffic signal. Traffic signal. Traffic signal. Semáforo. Traffic signal. This is different. I think it's called a stop sign. That's exactly right. Stop sign. Señal de stop. Stop sign. Stop sign. Stop sign. What is this and this? These are crosswalks. 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 Paso de peatones. Crosswalks. You say these are crosswalks? I don't understand. Yes, these are crosswalks. Didn't we learn these and those? No. Ah. Okay, thank you, Yolanda. <laughs> these and those are very easy. Let's look at them quickly before we continue. Do you remember how to use this and that? Vicente? Sure. Uh, this shirt is green. Uh, that jacket is green. Yes. Your shirt is green. Yolanda's jacket is gray. This book is small. That book is big. Very big. <laughs> now, when there's more than one, you 
used to be the plural form of this and that. These books, these books are small. Those books, those books are big. Usamos estas cosas para dar indicaciones, to give directions, directions, indicaciones, directions, directions, directions. Okay. I want to go to the department store. You are going to give me directions. You have to give me directions from the door of the school to the door of the department store. Quiero ir a los grandes almacenes. Y ustedes van a explicarme cómo llegar hasta allí desde la escuela. Okay? I am here. The school is behind me. What do I have to do first? Alejandro? You have to go that way. I have to turn left. Tengo que girar a la izquierda. Yes. In English, we use simple sentences for giving directions. We usually don't use sentences like, he turns right or you turn right. We simply say, turn right. In English, usamos frases sencillas para dar instrucciones. Indicaciones, órdenes. 
para formar estas frases. Imaginen que la palabra you está delante de la oración. Por lo tanto, se tendrá que usar la forma de singular you o la del plural you que sea adecuada en cada caso. ¿Ok? Ok. okay. Let's try using simple sentences to give directions. First, you told me to turn left. What do I have to do next? Anna? Walk east on 22nd Street to the corner of 22nd Street and McIntosh Road. Exactly. Walk east on 22nd Street to the corner is 22nd Street and McIntosh Road. Next, Gonzalo. Turn left. Yes, turn left. Imelda. Walk on McIntosh Road to 23rd Street. Yes, walk straight on McIntosh Road to 23rd Street. Straight means no turn. Recto. Straight. 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 Good. And then, Magnolia? Tiene que cruzar la calle. ¿Cómo se dice cruzar en inglés? Cross. 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 Okay, I have to cross the street. Now, Magnolia, can you give me a simple sentence? Cross 20, 22th. Street. Cross 23rd Street. Very good. Is there more? Yolanda. Yes. Then right and cross Macintosh Road. Good. Turn right, then cross Macintosh Road. Excellent. And where is the department store? What? On the corner of 23rd Street and Macintosh Road. Yes. The department store is on the corner of 23rd Street and McIntosh Road. Now, let's just check to see if our directions are correct. Turn left, walk east on 22nd Street to the corner of 22nd Street and McIntosh Road. Turn left, walk straight on McIntosh Road to 23rd Street. Cross 23rd Street, turn right, and cross McIntosh Road. Yes, the department store is on the corner of 23rd Street and McIntosh Road. Well done. It's not difficult, is it? No. 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 When you get home, be sure to do the exercises in the manual and the workbook. See you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Excuse me. Yes, please. Where is the library? Thanks, anyway. Excuse me. Where is the library? It's close. Go out of the building and turn right. Walk to the corner of Clover Street and turn left. What street will that be? That will be Dickinson Avenue. What street? Walk straight down Dickinson Avenue. At Pine Road, turn right and cross the street. Oh. Is there a restaurant close to the library? Yes, there are two. There's an Italian restaurant and a Chinese restaurant. Oh, I, I know the Italian restaurant. Yes, it's next to the gas station. The Chinese restaurant is behind the gas station. Great. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. Thank you, too. Excuse me. Where's the library? Excuse me. Where's the library? It's close. Go out of the building and turn right.
it's close. Go out of the building and turn right. Walk to the corner of Clover Street and turn left. Walk to the corner of Clover Street and turn left. What street will that be? What street will that be? Oh, is there a restaurant close to the library? Oh, is there a restaurant close to the library? Yes, there are two. Yes, there are two. <laughs> Pregunta. A veces me parece que oigo frases que no son correctas gramaticalmente. Hay un señor en mi oficina que siempre dice, long time no see. He oído a muchas personas hablar así. Long time no see es un dicho muy común que significa no te he visto en mucho tiempo. No es correcto gramaticalmente, pero los dichos no tienen que ser gramáticos. Pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Of course. Of course. To interrupt. To interrupt. To request. To request. 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 Politely. Politely. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Intersection. Intersection. At the beginning of. At the beginning of. In the middle of. In the middle of. At the end of. At the end of. To relax. Relax. Hello, everyone. Please have a seat. Let's start class. In the class anterior, aprendieron a dar instrucciones o indicaciones. In esta clase, seguiremos practicando esto y aprenderemos además a pedir instrucciones o a pedir ayuda. Goals for the class. Objetivos de la clase. 1. To interrupt politely. 1. Interrumpir a alguien cortésmente. 2. To ask for help. 2. Pedir ayuda. In your last class, you gave directions from the school to the department store. Am I right? Yes. Today, we are going to imagine that Daniela, a visitor who is observing the class, wants to drive from the school to the department store. Hoy, vamos a imaginar que Daniela necesita manejar desde la escuela hasta los grandes almacenes. She is going to go from the parking lot next to the school to the parking lot next to the department store. Let's try it. 
Tell her what to do first. Uh, she needs to... Ah, remember, use a simple sentence. She needs to turn left. Very good. Turn left. Drive straight on 22nd Street to the traffic light. Good. She is driving. So you use drive. And the traffic light is important. It is easy to see when you are driving. What's next? Turn left at the traffic light. Turn left at the traffic light. Lisa. Drive straight on Mackinac Road to the first traffic light. Drive straight. Tosh Road to the first traffic light. Mike. At the traffic light, turn right on 23rd Street. Okay. Where's the parking lot? The parking lot is on the left, next to the department store. Yes. You can also say it is in the middle of the block. También pueden decir que está en medio de la cuadra. Block. 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 Excellent. You did a good job. You used simple sentences to give directions. We talked about how to give directions, but we also need to ask for directions. Tenemos que saber pedir indicaciones. Necesitamos saber cómo parar a alguien en la calle y preguntarle información. En inglés, hay oraciones que utilizamos para parar a alguien y hacerle una pregunta cortésmente. Vamos a ver cuáles son. To interrupt politely, Para detener o interrumpir a alguien cortésmente, we can say, excuse me, excuse me, disculpe, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. We can say, pardon me, pardon me, perdone, pardon me, repeat, pardon me, pardon me. We can say, could you help me? Podría ayudarme? Could you help me? Could you help me? Could you help me? We can also say, can you help me? Puede ayudarme? Can you help me? Repeat. Can you help me? Can you help me? Estas son expresiones adecuadas para parar a alguien y hacerle una pregunta, sobre todo si se trata de un desconocido. Could you help me? Can you help me? Could you help me and can you help me are used specifically to interrupt and ask for help. Después de que hayamos parado a la persona, Le tenemos que pedir ayuda cortésmente. We can say, Could you tell me? Could you tell me how to get to the department store? ¿Podría decirme cómo llegar a los grandes almacenes? Could you tell me how to get to the department store? Repeat. Could you tell me? Store. Could you tell me how to get to the department store? We can also say, can you tell me 
how to get to the library. Can you tell me Can you tell me how to get to the library? Repeat. Can you tell me how to get to the library? Can you tell me how to get to the library? Both of these are ways to make polite requests. Let's practice a little. Prosadi, you want to go to the subway station. You need directions. I'm standing on the corner. Will you interrupt me? Are we? Good. Good. And how will you make your request? Can you please tell me how to get to the subway station? Excellent. Pardon me. Can you please tell me how to get to the subway station? Angela, you need to go to a convenience store. Excuse me, could you please tell me how to get to a convenience store? Good. Excuse me, could you tell me how to get to the convenience store? Very good. Maya, you have to go to the laundromat. Excuse me, can you please tell me how to get to the laundromat? That's great. Now let's see if we can ask for and give directions at the same time. Do you remember this list? Well, we're going to use it. We're going to run some errands. We don't know the neighborhood, so we'll have to ask for and give directions to each place. First, where do we have to go? The post office. Okay. Post office. Nothing. The bank. The bank. Octavio. The supermarket. Okay. Super market. Mariana. The dry cleaner. Okay. The dry cleaner. The bookstore. The bookstore. The restaurant. Right. We'll start with Angela. Angela will ask someone in the class for directions to the post office. This person will explain the directions, then that person will ask a different person for directions to the bank. We will continue until we do all the errands. Okay? Let's start. Anna. Excuse me, Octavio. Can you please tell me how to get to the post office? Sure. It's uh, across from the school, across 22nd Street. The post office is on the corner of 22nd Street and Watson Drive. Good. Now, Octavio, you are at the post office. Ask for directions to the bank. Could you help me? Could you tell me how to get from the post office to the bank? Yes. Turn right and walk east on 22nd Street. Then at the corner, turn left, cross 22nd Street, and the bank is going to be on the corner of 22nd Street and McIntosh Road. Excuse me, Luisa. Could you tell me how to get to the supermarket? Cross and McIntosh Road, then cross 22nd Street. Turn right and walk east on 22nd Street. Where is the supermarket? Juan. It is on the corner of 22nd Street and Walnut Avenue. Yes. You can also say, it is at the end of the block. Al final de la cuadra. It is at the end of the block. Okay. Now we need to go to the dry cleaner. Alexa. Can you tell me how to get to the dry cleaner? Of course. It is easy. Turn left and it is next to the supermarket. Okay. That was easy. But now, you need directions to the bookstore. Right. Can you help me? Can you tell me how to get to the bookstore? No problem. Turn left and walk down 22nd Street. Cross McIntosh Road. Turn right and cross... 22nd Street. Walk down 22nd Street. The bookstore is at the end of the block. And now we are almost finished. Angela, ask for directions to the restaurant. Pardon me, Juan. Can you please tell me how to get to the restaurant? 
Which restaurant? We have two restaurants in our neighborhood. The Spanish restaurant, please. Sure. Turn right and walk straight down 22nd Street, cross Macintosh Road, and the Chinese restaurant is on the corner. That's right. Wow. We have learned a lot today. Let's all go to the Chinese restaurant and relax. Yes. Hemos aprendido mucho hoy. Vayamos todos al restaurante chino. Hi, Mom. Hi. We went to a pizza place last night. Really? How was it? It was great. The pizza was good, and it was very crowded. Is it far from here? No, it's in the neighborhood on 14th Street. What street? 14th Street. Is it next to the bank? No, it's in the middle of the block between the supermarket and the drugstore. Isn't that a game arcade? <laughs> yes, it is. There's a pizzeria and a game arcade. How do you get there from the house? You walk to Georgetown Boulevard, turn right, walk to the end of the block and turn left at the corner of 14th Street. The pizzeria is in the middle of that block. Terrific. I can't wait to go. We went to a pizza place last night. We went to a pizza place last night. Really? How was it? Really? How was it? Is it far from here? Is it far from here? No, it's in the neighborhood on 14th Street. No, it's in the neighborhood on 14th Street. It's in the middle of the block. It's in the middle of the block between the supermarket and the drugstore. between the supermarket and the drugstore. Isn't that a game arcade? Isn't that a game arcade? Yes, it is. There's a pizzeria and a game arcade. Yes, it is. There's a pizzeria and a game arcade. <laughs>